I can't believe that the first anti-tank gunner I unlocked is called Torsten Arseman. <laughs> There's no way that's real. <laughs> oh no, man. Oh god. His surname is literally <laughs> Arseman. <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't. And you won't believe this, but later on, I got Willy Luck. <laughs> that's just not real. I refuse to believe that's a name. <laughs> Bro, where I come from, that's called getting laid. How are you all doing, humans of the world? My name is Major McDonalds, and you're watching a new type of video on my channel giving a complete and balanced review of the big Enlisted update. I'm also a partnered content creator with Enlisted, so I did actually know a few of the things in it ahead of time, but don't worry, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I'm completely allowed to give my own opinions unhinged. I've played the game for many, many hours since the update on the 30th of March in order to ensure that this video will consider every single aspect of it for a fair, balanced, and comprehensive review. If you're a loyal subscriber, then and you know the score by now. Let's get into it. Enlisted's long-awaited Battle of Stalingrad campaign has finally launched. It may have taken multiple delays, and it may not have been the campaign many players actually wanted to see. <coughs> Pacific. <coughs> myself included. But that being said, it would be a huge mistake to boycott the Stalingrad campaign and all of its accompanying updates in the other campaigns due to the paywall $30 full access bundle. And in this video, I'll explain why. Before the update was released, a pre-order package was released for $29.99 USD. Now, knowing Gaijin pricing is often... dodgy, this I was pleasantly surprised by. The entire campaign, with apparently no further microtransactions, we'll revisit this later, with two squads of premium flamethrower tanks and two customization skins for those tanks alongside four times the XP you would normally get and all weapons and troops already starting out with four stars and only one level away from being fully upgraded. All of that for only $29.99. That's cheaper than a lot of other games that don't give you any of those benefits apart from just access to play the dang thing at first release. It's a very good deal, but I know what a lot of you watching this video will be thinking. Isn't it pay to win? Well... No, at least not really. Let me explain why. Upon hearing various things from Gaijin themselves about the update before it was released, I was very skeptical. I too, upon seeing the entire Stalingrad leveling system, believed it was exceptionally pay to win, but only at the later levels. The reasons I thought it was pay to win were because of just and only two specific levels right at the very end of the campaign, level 24 and level 25. Limiting the massive drum magazine SMGs with 71 rounds per magazine to only paid players means that free to play players could only obtain the PPS 42 or the MP40 as the best SMGs they can get. This was a huge difference as the PPS 42 and MP40 are substantially lower quality weapons than those two. And if you're interested in watching my review on the best assault weapons in the entire game then you should click on the top right hand corner of the video now on the white exclamation mark. But not only this, level 25 was perhaps even worse. The AVT-40 and the MKB-42H have been considered in other campaigns they are currently available in as extremely overpowered fully automatic rifles which would have been available in Stalingrad to pretty much every trooper class in the entire game. The best rifles free to play players could actually only get were the Mosin rifle and the 98k with grenade launchers, which is a massive difference. Free-to-play players would never have been able to compete with paying long-term players. However, every other paid squad or weapon has an almost equal equivalent of weapons for free other than these two levels. Look at it. Some of the worst shotguns in the entire game are paid weapons. Some pointless tanks that are outclassed later in the campaign are as well. The Mortar Squad is too, which most players never use anyway. The SVT-40 and the ZH-29 are paid weapons but you get the SVT-38, which is literally the exact same as the SVT-40. I know, it's really, really stupid. And the Axis also get the Gewehr 41, which is still a very, very viable semi-automatic rifle and very nearly as good. Similarly, the DT-29 and the MG-42 have free equivalents, such as the DP-27 and MG-34, with almost zero differences or very few between them, really. So they are only minuscule upgrades on the free weapons. And in my most recent video on the best machine guns in the game, 
game, the MG34 is actually better than the MG42 in my opinion. So if you think about it, only the two levels I mentioned, level 24 and level 25, were the problematic ones. That all being said, it does say just below it that they reserved the right to change some of the campaign levels. And boy, did they. On the forums, very soon after, changed it to this. The major things to notice in this are that the best SMGs in the game have moved to free-to-play players. So whilst sure, can't get the Thompson or the Danuvia, can get even better weapons of the same class for free. This makes paying for the full access package make much, much more sense, as you can pay to get unique weapons like the Danuvia and the Thompson, but all players will have access to the best SMGs over time, even if paid players get the Danuvia or Thompson a few levels before free players get the PPSH. But once again, because of how quickly paid players level up, they will pretty much only spend two or three battles with the Corali or Thompson before upgrading to the PPSHs, so it's almost not pay to win at all, and you can easily demolish enemies with these weapons with your free weapons, and if you can't, you just need to improve at the game, and I have a handy series on my channel to help you with that. The other major change was making the AVT-40 and the MKB-42H available for only engineers and assaulter classes, not every single class, whilst still being paid weapons. Whilst admittedly this doesn't solve the entirety of the problem of pay to win, it's much better than it was. I mean, you wouldn't really want to use them for your own assaulter classes anyway, as you'd much prefer the PPSHs that both factions get at earlier levels for free now. Yes. Letting them still be available for engineers is not perfect, as they are the best class in the game anyway, and good players will use engineers a lot anyway. But it does make more sense. What else could they restrict it to? Think about it. Yeah, if you are a good player, you'd have an engineer in every squad anyway, and you'd use your engineer squads too, in order to get a decent number of troopers with MKBs and AVTs. But it does mean you have to trade off other classes against it. So will you sacrifice engineers for radio men, flamethrowers, or anything else? You decide. But remember, even as a free player, you still get free weapons that can match it easily if you are accurate as anything can kill anything in this game, or possibly beat it in the case of PPSHs. As a result, in my opinion, these new changes, alongside the bolt action rifle buffs which we'll come to in a second, means it is hardly pay to win, and not as much as some of the other big content creators out there would try to have you believe. <coughs> not mentioning names. <coughs> It's almost as if those that say it is haven't even looked at the weapons or the levels that you get in the actual campaign itself. And what did they expect? Getting access to everything for free? Come on. Sure, paying does give you access to more cool gear and some ever so slightly better gear, but that doesn't directly mean you will win more games if you pay. It's not how this game works at all. And if you think it is, then you're the problem. Yes, you can say it's ever so slightly pay to win, but hardly. And if you are still complaining about this saying that the campaign is completely pay to win, completely, utterly, there's nothing that sums up the campaign more than pay to win, then really, it's kind of your own fault for not being a good player. Harsh but true, because any Mosin Nagant rifle can destroy an MKB 42A user. I've done it countless times already, and I have no superhuman powers, I promise. So you can easily too. But this is all besides the point to begin with. The free-to-play experience is a trial. You get to test out the campaign's maps, weapons, levels, uniqueness, fun to play, etc. for free. And if you want to commit to the campaign and play it more, the idea is that you probably will pay. Have you never paid for a game on Steam, for example? A flat fee of $30 or even more than that just to have access to it to play. And often this comes without a trial. We should honestly be thankful for the devs for letting players play it for free, and not just putting a flat $30 fee wall in order to have access to it at all. Once you change your mindset to think about that the $30 cost as getting full access to the campaign, and not as something pay to win, then you realise that everything here is justified. Now I know, many players came to the game because it was free, and I understand that, and you can play the new campaign for free, that is my point, and you can get access to some of the best weapons in the game if you do play it for free. Once again, not pay to win. Hopefully you understand me when I say this, and I understand why many of you see it as pay to win, but it hardly is, almost at all, especially when combined with some of the other updates that we will discuss now. We haven't even mentioned all of the other amazing features about the Stalingrad campaign that made it worthwhile just to play the dang thing. The maps are terrifically designed, and I'm in love with them aesthetically. They are based on real historical areas of Stalingrad, which now in the present day is called Volgograd, and the scenery is, wow, 
Surely when you spawned in for the first time, you heard the Soviet propaganda on the loudspeaker, which sent chills down your spine. Darkflow, the developers, have really put their all into the maps, and it has paid off. Yes, there is only one main area which all the games currently cycle maps through, so you do see a lot of the same areas many, many times. But that is to be expected for a brand new campaign. Over time, new maps will be released to vary things up, and of course, new maps aren't without their faults. The new maps in the Stalingrad campaign often inspire new players to just camp up in the tallest buildings and sniping, which 1. doesn't help your team whatsoever, and 2. is incredibly annoying for both enemies and your own teammates, because it literally does not promote going to the objective points and literally standing on them, which is literally how you win games and level up quicker. So if you're one of those players that are complaining about how long it takes to level up and how long the grind is, but you are the one sitting in a building camping and sniping, then please don't you even dare talk bad about the campaign because you are contributing to your own downfall at this point not the devs. In addition, all of the other new updates can demonstrate that the developers are really trying hard to improve the game and listen to us as players, and we are so thankful for that. There's a whole host of brand new, unique, fun to use weapons inside of the campaign itself, but also in the other campaigns in their new gold weapons, premium squads and levels. Not only are there new weapons, but updates to existing ones and improvements to others, mostly in their in-game models and their sounds. If you guys have played Stalingrad at all at just level 1, then you'll know that your most in rifles for the Soviet Soviets and the car 98 k for the Germans look amazing and have awesome new firing sounds. I am literally in love with the new sounds. And that's all not to mention that all bolt action rifles have been buffed for damage in Stalingrad. Finally, it means that if you land a hit with your bolt action rifle, it will kill or down enemies guaranteed. And most of the time, it instantly kills. That is what every player has been crying out for. And it sticks to one of the best aspects of the game itself, that all weapons can kill enemies easily. You do do not need to have the best weapons in the game to kill people. Yeah, sure, you need to be good at aiming and have good reaction times, but that comes with all first person shooter games, and if you don't have that skill, then you need to train it. All other FPS games require you to do the same. Think about COD, or Halo, or even Hell Let Loose. Are you telling me that they don't require these skills? Once you are good at aiming with them, you will realise how amazing they are. For God's sake, I've completed the entire Stalingrad Axis campaign already, and I literally used only Car 98 ks and MP40s on any of my troops. Literally nothing else. No silly semi-automatic Gewehr 41s or ZH-29s at all. Sure, I put some MKBs on a few troops once I unlocked it, but honestly, the Car 98 k is more accurate for me, and I've actually gone back to put Car 98 ks on them all, whilst removing MKBs on my troops. And this shows another reason why the game is not pay to win, because the default most basic of the basic weapons that you can get from level 1 have been heavily buffed, and you can so easily level up quickly with them. I promise. And then all the other amazing things that have come out in this update. New squads, new vehicles, new premium squads, new maps, new missions, new locations, especially in the Moscow and Tunisia campaigns. Those new maps look amazing and very historically accurate for the most part. Brand new silenced weapons too. A huge array of new mechanics which are more realistic as well. Even AI soldiers have received more realistic changes, which was much needed. Loads of new graphical changes, more and more accurate sound effects on weapons and also on environments. And and a huge list of bug fixes. This is all not to mention the much in demand release of the customization system, which allows you to really grow a bond with your troops and vehicles whilst keeping everything historically accurate. In addition, there are new events to get Twitch drops and watching streams. By the way, let me know if you'd be interested in watching possible streams by myself. I'm considering starting it if there's enough interest. And completing achievements to get appearance orders to customize your own troops for free as well. This is all not to mention the insane work on the April Fool style unknown war events where you fight on the moon. You cannot question that the devs have really tried to improve the game and add so many new fun things, and as a content creator for the game who hopes the game has a huge longevity into the future, I thank you. But all players watching this video now, keep putting on the forums everything that you want to change, because they listen to those things, if you spam it enough, I mean. However, all of these new amazing things were not without their problems, issues and debates. To begin with, four times the normal XP for the full access package in Stalingrad is extraordinarily high. Some might say excessively high. This extraordinary difference will mean that dedicated players will have access to the PPSHs and MKBs and AVTs much quicker than free-to-play players, giving the impression that the game really is pay-to-win to new players. 
which it isn't if they look at it properly. But they probably wouldn't look at it properly if they're just getting demolished by them. There were also at least four delays to the update, pushing it back by a week at a time, where everyone, including all the content creators in our Discord chat, were distraught when they found out they had to wait again. I don't know if this is a management issue or whatever by the devs, and yes, I might love the update, but they really need to communicate with players and content creators better. There is also no system on what to do after you've completed the campaign and fully ranked up everything, which for Stalingrad is going to be substantially quicker than on other campaigns. For example, myself, I've already completed the campaign, I did it in a few days playing just a few hours a day. What's to keep players in game after that? I know so many experienced players who've left the game after unlocking everything in other campaigns, as what is there left to achieve? The fun of the game only has a minuscule pull factor once you've played the game for so long already, and have multiple days of in-game time already. There should be some achievement to go for, or players will leave quickly. Then there was the post that the new campaign would not have any microtransactions, which was a major selling point of the new business model for the Stalingrad campaign. Buy the campaign full access once, and then not need anything else. Yet a few days later, they released a premium squad for Stalingrad, the Night Witches. And whilst I am a major fan of the Night Witches as a premium squad concept, as it's not overpowered, but very fun and unique, and you should know that that's what I look for if you've seen any of my other premium squad reviews, it makes no sense why they said there will be no microtransactions and then a few days later completely backtrack on that to give a microtransaction. And this premium squad is only for one side of the campaign, nothing on the other, nothing for the Axis side. Can we trust what the devs say going into the future? That's up for debate. They also fairly under the radar removed the XP booster for squad experience and soldier experience, which I bet many of you haven't noticed, but it will indeed make a noticeable impact on how quickly you get your squad upgrades especially. Some of the new campaign levels are also a tad puzzling mostly due to their order. For example, the M4A1 New Sherman tank is now one of the last unlocks in the Normandy campaign but you unlock the jumbo tank, a better tank, much earlier. Why would you ever use this new Sherman? And then we can dive even deeper. Yes, there are quite a few issues. The pricing for other microtransactions in other campaigns and for customization of vehicles and soldiers is ridiculously high. Arguably the worst thing about the new update in my opinion. Alongside this utter lie of the save 95% deal on the bundle. How on God's green earth can you justify a $72 package for only two premium squads? The entire Stalingrad campaign is less than half of that. And prices to customize your items are also ridiculous. It makes me think how on earth they came up with these prices to begin with. Many Discord users also found issues with rally points where they could be built on points. How overpowered is that? Imagine dying and spawning exactly where you died. That would literally make me freak the hell out thinking it was cheating. Then one of the other largest issues in the game upon release of the Stalingrad campaign, because you can't use your two previously used squads in game, which has been a mechanic for all the other campaigns to encourage versatility, all new players couldn't spawn at level 1 after using their two infantry squads and all vehicle slots being taken. That really confused me when I couldn't spawn. I sat here for like a good 10 minutes waiting for a branch of hope to spawn. There were also issues with picking up weapons and console players in particular suffered from texture and other visual bugs alongside many old gen console players not being able to even play it at all which is a massive problem alienating half of the player base. Then some of the new mechanics turned out to well not be as well thought through as we thought. The new head shaking mechanic from explosions from your own teammates and through walls means that in Stalingrad you literally spend more time feeling like you are drunk than sober. Machine guns and other heavy weapons have also become literally worthless as now you drain stamina at an alarming rate from just aiming with them if you aren't mounted or braced on anything, which literally makes machine guns useless when you are the attacking team, unless you are unrealistically drop shotting 24-7 because you want to be running running towards the point with them. For God's sake though man, I'd actually rather use a rifleman with another car 98k than use this utter sh**. So this video has hopefully persuaded you that the Stalingrad update is actually really beneficial for the game and for the most part not pay to win. I'm a huge fan and I'm not afraid to say that I was very skeptical at first. Yes, the update is not perfect and had many bugs and issues that we've just spoken about alongside many others that we haven't spoken about, but the devs have worked hard and already two days later after the major update, they released a minor update to fix many of the bugs, including the spawning issue. So you can't really fault the devs for trying and listening to players. As as long as you still make your voices heard on the forums and on videos like mine. And to be honest, unbreakable bathtubs were definitely the most important thing to fix. It must have been so OP using a bathtub as a shield to block you from any explosions and bullets. New strats confirmed. Oh, 
And if any of you fell for the NFT or Unknown War April Fool's jokes, then I've lost all hope for you as well. And to redeem yourself, you need to subscribe to my channel. It's the only way, I swear. If you guys want to watch more informative and review style videos on Enlisted, then there's so many videos on my channel on a huge variety of different topics for you, with some on the screen for you now. But in any case, it's been a pleasure ranting at you today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.